Well, hi everyone, welcome back to the official Master Effects Training YouTube channel. And in this video, I want to show you a really cool trick, again, with 3D using text and textures. Now, a lot of really cool things you can do with just a little bit of experimentation. And one of the great things is you can take flat two-dimensional objects and textures and then make them look very realistic with just a little bit of 3D tricks and some lighting. So what I'm going to do here is actually something I, I saw, I was actually inspired by something I saw, I was in a car recently, and I saw on the dash there was this letters, and it was some chrome lettering, and then this kind of the texture around it, the dash texture, was kind of plush, it was kind of pushing around the letters and everything like that, and I thought that was a really interesting um, look, and actually can be achieved in Photoshop rather easily. Now all we need to achieve this is some text, as you can see right here, and then we just need a texture. Now I have a leather texture here that I'm going to use. Um, and we're going to use that to put around our object. Now I do not like the color of my texture here. I do like the texture itself, but not so fond of the color. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, color out of it just by pressing Shift Command U. And that will leave me just a regular gray texture there. So we got so this nice gray leather, if you will. Um, now let's go ahead and take this and drag it on over to our working document here. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it so it fits inside the canvas area there. There we go. And let's put that texture below the text layer here in the layers panel. And I'm just going to scale the text down a little bit. All right. So we have our text layer. And then we've got the leather texture layer just below it. And then we got our background layer. So... What I need to do first is I'm going to convert the text into paths. So go ahead and just um, right click on the layer itself on the text layer and then go down here and choose create work path and that will go ahead and generate a vector shape based on the shape of the text. Now over here in the paths panel you're going to see it created a new work path. So I'm just going to double click that and save it and there we go. Now. Um, we're going to actually use this path to create a 3D object with the leather texture layer. However, I don't want it to create a extrusion of just the text with the leather on the front face. I rather I want the background of the of the area outside of the text to be my 3D object. So, while that path is selected, you can go ahead and grab your path selection tool and just go ahead and make sure all the text is selected go up in the options bar up here and just simply change the path operations from combine shapes to subtract front shape. And when you do that in the paths panel, you're going to see your path. Um, the background is white and the now, now the text is uh, grayed out, meaning it's inactive. So now when we create the 3D object, it's going to extrude and then it's going to knock out the letters instead of making the 3D object out of the letters. So here's what I mean. So I've got the path layer selected and the leather texture layer selected here in the layers panel. And then I'm going to go to the 3D panel and just choose new 3D extrusion from selected path. It's going to create that extrusion based on that texture. Now you can see right away, if I grab my current view in the 3D panel and move my uh, camera around, it extruded the object and knocked out the text. As you can see, it goes all the way through, knocking it straight out. Now, right off the bat, as usual, my extrusion depth is a lot more than I need it to be. So let's go ahead and open up the Properties panel here and select layer 1 in the 3D panel. And then right here is the extrusion depth. I'm going to knock that down to about 50. I don't need it to be nearly that thick. Um, so once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and hit Default Camera and then bring it back to the front view there. So We'll get back to the texture in a moment. We've gone ahead and created that 3D object. Now let's create the 3D text. Now we're going to go back to that original three, um, text layer right here. And this time we're going to go ahead and make it a 3D object um, just by going 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. Now it extrudes the text just like it's um, supposed to. Um, however, both objects are separate 3D layers, as you can see here in the layers panel. I need them to be in a single 3D layer. So I'm just going to merge this... Um, text or the 3d text down into the texture 3d layer so when i press command e it's going to go ahead and merge it down now unlike regular layers it is aware that they are 3d objects and you can see it's it's uh put them together and it's one 3d layer in the layers panel however in the 3d panel over here 
you can see it's still two separate objects right there. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna select that current view yet again and just rotate the um, object just here a little bit. And I need to push the text back. So when I click and select the text itself, I can use the widget here to push the text back and get it right where it's almost flush with that um, surface there. I wanna have it kind of pushing out just a little bit. Okay, so then I'm gonna hit the default camera and bring it back to the front. Now we're ready to start um, altering the objects. We're still looking at flat images basically, even though they are 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the layer one, which is the background texture, the leather texture here. Let's just zoom in so we can see. So in that 3D panel, I've got layer one selected. You're gonna go over to the properties panel and click on the third tab at the top here. And this is where you're gonna enter the cap settings. Here's where you can apply a bevel or inflate the object. So now down here in the inflate properties, we're gonna set the angle to 55 and then you're just gonna grab the strength slider and start pushing it up. Now, once you do that, you're immediately gonna see your texture start to push out. Let me see, there we go. So now you can see, uh, if you go too far, of course, you get a little distorted and it doesn't look right. So in this case, we're gonna keep it at around five to seven um, for, the, um, for the strength amount there. And as you can see, if I grab my current view and rotate it around, now it's kind of plushing out, like the letters are kind of pushed in like that with the way they were mounted and it's kind of uh, letting that leather kind of plush around it. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, actually I'm gonna go at, see how the text is kind of extruding and pushing itself out there. I'm gonna actually adjust that depth of that extrusion. It doesn't need to be that deep. It's, uh, it's not, it's, to be honest, it's inconsequential because we're only gonna be looking at the front face here, but um, I just wanna go ahead and adjust that anyway. All right, so we got the leather element. Let's go back to that layer. And so we've got the leather kind of pushing out and select the layer of one front inflation, which is what we're looking at right here. And we're going to adjust some of the surface properties. So right down here, when I have the layer one front inflation material selected, um, I'm going to go over to the properties panel and we're going to set the shine and reflection to around 50%. About like that. And that's, uh, that's a lot, it'll come into play when we adjust the lining in a moment, but you can start to see some of the reflection already showing up there. Now, if you see a brighter reflection on your object, chances are you're looking at the default IBL, which is if you click on the environment property and you go over here, this IBL, if you see one with the gray and the white dots and everything like that, that's fine. That's the default IBL. Um, we're going to be changing that in just a moment, but just in case yours looks different than mine, if you're following along, that is why. So let's go back to that front inflation material on the leather. So we adjusted the shine and reflection to around 50. Now we're gonna go down here to the bump property right down here. And you're gonna go to that little pop-out menu and you're gonna go ahead and use the existing leather texture right here, which is layer one. And you can see it starts to roughen up that texture a little bit more. So that's looking really good. So now, got those elements all in place for the, for the moment. Let's go to the text itself and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the leather by going over here into the cap settings for the text object. And once again, we're gonna push the strength out and maybe increase the angle a little bit just so it's kind of giving us a, a curved surface on that text there. And that looks like it will work, okay. So again, we're just bulging out the front face of that text. Now we wanna add some elements to make that text look like it's a shiny gold. So here in the text layer, we're gonna go twirl that down and go ahead and select um, master front inflation material, which is the, the front face of the text we're looking at here. And we're gonna go and again, set the shine and reflection this time to the maximum amount of 100. And also we're gonna set the specular highlight just a little bit brighter. So it really picks up the light some more. Now, again, you may see um, those dots and everything shining on your object, and that is because of the IBL, and I, like I said, we'll be getting to that in just a moment. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and take care of that now. Um, I'm going to go back to that environment property. Go to the IBL and just choose new texture. And let's make that a 1,000 by 1,000 pixel document. And go back in there and choose edit texture because it fills it with white by default. I'm going to press Command-I just to invert the color uh, so, it's, so it reverses it from white to black. And then I'm just gonna add a simple 
radial gradient right here in the middle of the document. That's all it is, just a white radial gradient. And I was going to close that and save the changes. And once again, if you're in the environment property, you can actually move that light around and notice how the light interacts with the surface of the, not just the letters, but also with the leather texture as well, based on the settings we applied. So that looks really good. All right, so that's the IBL. Let's get back to the text and go back and select that um, text front inflation material. Now we want to give it a, a shiny surface, kind of like a gold or um, like a chromey look. So we need to do that using the environment property down here. So remember, where we adjusted the shine and reflection, go further down to the environment property here and just simply choose load texture. Now you want to get an abstract chrome texture like this one I have here. I'm going to go ahead and select that, click open, and there you can see, you're going to see immediately the text take on that um, shiny chrome look about it. Now if I grab the current view and rotate this around, you can see how the object acts as I move it around there. So you see that. So the chrome is interacting with the object in a really interesting way. Now, if I go back and choose that front inflation, um, remember where we adjusted the shine and reflection? Down here you got a setting called roughness. Now those lines in that chrome texture, if I were to render it now, in fact, if I do a selection and just start rendering this now, it's going to mirror reflect that object and I'm going to see those lines that are part of that texture. And if you don't want to see that, just go to that roughness property and increase that amount to around 25. And what that's going to do is basically smooth out that texture when it renders. So you'll see that play into play out in just a moment. Now I'm going to go back to that environment property because I don't want the text to be chrome. I actually want it to be gold. So I'm going to go back in here and edit that chrome texture. And I'm going to add a new blank layer and just give this a gold color fill. And I'll set the, the blend mode to overlay. Okay. So close that, save the changes, and now the text is gold, as you can see right there. So if I grab my current view, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, kind of move this around a little bit more. And, and as I do that, you can see the texture, that chrome texture, kind of change as the angle of the object changes. I think it's really interesting there. So now I'm going to actually play with more dramatic angles. So let's go into the current view, which is the current camera. And in the properties panel, you can set your field of view by the millimeter lens. It's like doing a virtual lens change here. I'm actually going to set this to a lower number like 15. So I can get a much wider angle and it's going to push it back in space. But let's drag the camera closer and perhaps even get a little bit more dramatic angle here. Something like this. I'm going to go back to my layers here. Where is my layers? There it is. Pick my background black so the object will blend a little bit better. Now, zoom in on the object here a little bit and I can change my angle and you'll see how the object interacts on there. And don't forget to adjust that environment or image based light as well. Select the environment property and you can move that light around just as you can see here. Now there's one more light to adjust here and that is the default infinite light. So if you go in the light section of the 3D panel, you'll see this infinite light right here. That is what is created by default and it's my least favorite of the 3D lights. So go in here in the properties panel and change the type to a point light. And this is just one um, ball of a little wireframe ball just gives off light. Now notice how more dramatic the lighting looks as I move this light source around. And you'll see that the shine, the specular highlight on the, on the leather is picking up that look really well. So we're putting a little bit of a highlight on that texture there. And there we go. Now I'm going to um, go ahead and start a render here and just see what I get. So I'm going to hold down shift option command and then press R and it's going to go ahead and start rendering. Now immediately I should be able to tell how well it's going to look. So you'll see that the, the highlights tend to diffuse on the text a little bit. So we need to adjust a couple of things there. Now one thing you can adjust is that point light. Remember her, that one we added just a moment ago? Here in the properties panel, I'm going to take the intensity up to about 115. That's going to help a lot. Um, 
You can also increase the intensity of that image-based light if you wanted to. You can go over here and just maybe make this like 110, brighten it up a little bit, and perhaps start the render again. And the text still may be a little subdued. And it actually looks pretty good. But if you wanted to change, if you like the angle that you're looking at your final artwork, but you don't like the, um, the arrangement of the reflection on the text, now if it was an image-based light that we were using for this chrome effect, we could just simply move it around and it would change it altogether. However, because we applied the chrome texture as a, an environment property for that specific shape, we have to go into that property. Again, um, text object, front inflation material. Go back to that environment property right down here. And this time you're gonna go into that menu and choose edit UV properties. Now here, we're just gonna adjust the offset. And by using the sliders here, as I move this around, you can reposition the chrome texture anywhere you want to see more of the specular highlights, just like that. So I think that light might work pretty well. So let's go ahead and do a test render here and see what we're going to get. So you can see the text is reflecting on the, on the leather surface. We've got all kinds of really cool things happening here. And zoom in. Restart the render there. But now you can see how we've taken a simple leather texture and some text and put it in a very realistic environment with the letters looking like it's got plush leather kind of put around it. And the great thing is, of course, because it's 3D, we can play with the angle. If we want to look at it straight on or we can give us a more dramatic angle like this. I'm always talking about macro effects, you know, using 3D and such like that. So we can get a more dramatic angle here. Um, and something else really cool, you don't ever want to forget that you can add depth of field. If I wanted to go ahead and put um, in, the in the current view here, in the camera settings here in the properties panel, if I set the depth of field to, let's just do one, you'll see a blur effect appear. And just option click where you want it to be in focus. So if I just option click right here on this M, and then go ahead and start the render, uh, it's going to go ahead and start rendering it and keep it in focus where I put it, and you'll start to see it have a blur effect as it gets further back in the space. Now, it's going to look grainy and fuzzy at first, but as each render makes a pass, it's going to get that much more uh, finer detail as you go along. So just another way of looking at 3D and text and textures to achieve very realistic surfaces and looks on your object's quickly and easily here inside Photoshop. And don't forget to check out all the other training available here on the YouTube page, as well as at MasterFXTraining.com. We'll see you guys. Take care.